Hey guys, Dr. Christy Ennis. If you have ever had a torturous, awful pain in the butt that's not your little brother or an unwanted neighbor, then this video is for you today. Now terms like sciatica and piriformis syndrome get tossed about all the time, and a lot of times people get the wrong diagnosis. And that's actually pretty important because the treatment is different for both of those diagnoses. Same nerve, that sciatic nerve, but coming from two different spots. So today, I'm going to show you how to test for each one so you can tell which issue you have and give you some treatment so that you can start working on things right away. I also have a bunch of videos on both of these, so I'll link those as we go along. So, very first thing, like I said, the sciatic nerve actually starts in the back and can come all the way down into the butt, down the leg, all the way down into the foot. So you can have pain, whether it's coming from here or here, from that nerve, anywhere along that line. So just keep that in mind that, oh, no, my pain's here. Oh, my pain's here. It could still be coming from either spot. So let's start actually with the back. Now very often, believe it or not, pain and the issue tends to come more from the back than it does from the muscle, even if the muscle hurts. Remember I said it can hurt anywhere along that line. So the very first thing you're going to do, and you may already know this off the top of your head, because usually if something hurts, you're like, eh, not going to do it, right? But if you were to bend forward, it's OK if you don't have amazing flexibility. If you were to bend forward and went, oh, that hurts my butt, or you bend backwards and you go, oh, that hurts my butt, my leg, my foot, et cetera, et cetera, hands down right away, you can already know that things are going to be coming from the back. Right? You just move the spine. If it was coming from the muscle, it wouldn't hurt to bend like this, even if you're not flexible, okay? So that's number one. Number two, and this actually is even number one. Haha, <laughs> do you get that? One, two, two, one. If you wake up and you look like this, right? And you're walking around like this, this is a little shift, huh? Pretty apparent to everybody. That tends to be more from a disc issue. Your body's trying to get away from that. And so that shift right there definitely is coming from the spine, not from the butt. And I will show you how to correct that also, OK? Lastly, or actually two more, really, we're going to test out that nerve a little bit more. So let's say you've got your pain on this side. Again, whether it's the leg or whether it's the butt, if you take your hands and place them behind you, I'm actually going to turn to the side a little bit, and then let yourself slump down, have bad posture. I never say that. And then let that leg kick out. If you go, whoa, and that hurts, OK, there's definitely a nerve tension in there. If you lift that head up and you go, oh, that's so much better, or lifting the back up and go, oh, that's so much better. I can kick my leg out all day long, do the little can-can without it hurting. Then that also is coming from the spine, right? We're adding that other portion of it here and here. And when you release that, if it releases the pain, again, that means there's more of a spine influence than the butt. Because if it's just coming from that muscle, this and this aren't going to make a whole heck of a lot of difference, OK? I'm going to get down right on the ground. This is another nerve test. And this one's also going to be to see if that muscle is irritated, too. So we're kind of switching a little bit. So if I take, again, remember it's that left leg. If I do this and I straighten that leg out, again, don't worry about flexibility, and I go, whoo, you have to say it just like that, whoo, right? You're getting that zinging sensation. That's nerve, OK? Now, if you, yes, you have to touch your butt. If you poke around on your butt, and the piriformis actually starts in the sacrum and comes and wraps around over to the hip, so if you do this and you poke at that muscle and you're like, oh my god, again, just like that, then you know that that is coming from the muscle too, right? Nerves irritated, but most likely from the muscle. If you're in this position and it hurts like a son of a gun, and you're like, well, I don't know, I don't feel anything there, again, more likely to be from the spine, OK? Here's another great way to tell if that muscle is a pain in the butt. Yes, I'm so punny today. Um, if you lie on the side that doesn't hurt, and you bring that other leg, it's OK if the bottom leg's bent or straight, whatever you want to do. Bring that other leg up so you're flexing. It doesn't have to be quite 90 degrees, but you know, roughly. Knee comes down. You're going to lift this lower leg up. And if you're like, wowzas, okay, that's activating the muscle. So if it's a muscle problem, it's going to hurt. 
The other one you can do then is even lift this up a little bit higher. That's going to add more activation. So if this one didn't quite hurt <laughs> and you're not sure, lift that whole leg. If that's like, whoa, or really weak, that's another indication that you've got a muscle problem, OK? One last one for that muscle. This is not always true, but sometimes overstretching a muscle also hurts. So if you go into this piriformis stretch and come here and you're like, oh my god, I am tight as can be, OK, step one, probably that means it's tight and that's being affected, or it really strains that muscle. Still could be the spine a little bit, so this one's not quite as clear. But it also could be that piriformis muscle. I like the other tests better, but this is just one more to add to your arsenal there too, OK? So what the heck do you do about it? Uh, like I said before, I will definitely link those videos. But number one is, if you're walking around like this, your friends are going to notice. So let's fix that first, OK? So if I am shifted, I'm actually going to go the other way, just because it's easier for this video. If I'm shifted this way, I'm going to get towards the wall. And I'm actually going to press my hip straight towards that wall. So if I'm out like this, I'm going to try to gently press in towards that wall. Because you cannot fix a darn thing until you fix this sideways little shift first, OK? So 10 to 15 repetitions a few times a day. It's OK if you can only start out really with small motion. No big deal. Keep pain in mind. Generally speaking, with sciatica, it feels better to extend because you're taking pressure off of the disc. So if you've been sitting, trying to do some little extensions like this tends to help. And also, being on that stomach, and starting with little press-ups here. Sometimes you need to do the little frog leg position first to help open up that space a little bit more. Trust me, you'll know when you try it. And again, 10 to 15 or so, roughly. All right, so those are some of the ones that I, are my go-to for people. For the piriformis, remember I said sometimes stretching aggravates it. And because that sciatic nerve can run actually right in between the muscle or underneath it, if you dig for dear life, you can actually make it worse. And again, you'll know if you've tried massaging it and you're like, ah, my leg really hurts. If you sound like Kermit the Frog too, that's a big problem. Um, then you'll know that there is nerve that's getting smushed there. So I usually start out with just some really light self-massage. I love my Derma Edge, and this is available, so I'll link that too. But this is a great way to just get some blood flow going. If it's tolerable, and you know you have a knot or a tender spot that doesn't cause intense pain, if you take that edge and dig into that spot, gent well, dig gently, <laughs> moderate pressure, and then add a little clamshell here. You're doing a little pin and stretch and using the muscle itself to help release it, OK? You do that until you go, eh, that doesn't feel so bad anymore. And then lastly, you really want to make sure that you work on the strength. So a lot of times, these glute muscles and these hip muscles are not working right, and so that poor piriformis takes the brunt of it. So to strengthen those glutes, one of my favorites is the little froggy bridge. Heels together, toes apart, and you're lifting and squeezing into those buttons, OK? 10 to 15 repetitions here as well. To get that side butt, I love the side lying, just basic leg raise. With that toe turned down a little, making sure you're in the right position. You can see your feet and maybe your toes a little bit, or your toes and part of your foot, but you shouldn't see much of your leg, or your legs are too far forward. Turning those toes down and then lifting, kind of aiming towards that heel. So we're really getting that gluteus medius, that middle part, right? Again, 10 to 15 reps. Make sure these don't hurt, OK? So you can stick with that soft tissue stuff first and move into the exercise as things start to calm down. Now, notice I didn't show you the stretch. I'm going to, but only if it doesn't hurt. I'll, get you the, I'll stay on the left side here. So this that I just did with that test, if this feels just like a nice pull, you go ahead and do that stretch, OK? If it doesn't, wait until you've done some loosening into the muscle. The other option is to cross that leg a little and then bring it towards the opposite shoulder. This is a little bit more of a mild stretch. And again, 30 seconds, a minute, really hold it until you feel you get a little bit of extra motion in there. So there you have it, two totally different diagnoses of the same darn huge nerve and ways to treat them that are going to be a little bit different from one another. So thanks so much for tuning in today.